After five hours, the batteries were almost flat and the men completely exhausted. We had a tough decision to make. The first concern of our skipper, Commander Conaway, was for the life of his men. We had on board the wolf pack commander, Captain Cromwell, who had heard that the Japs used a special brand of torture to extract information from their captives. Suddenly, a decision was reached. We'd battle service and use our deck gun to fight it out with the destroyer. Conaway and the next two in command, Lieutenant Allen and Lieutenant DeFreeze, were killed almost instantly. I succeeded to command. The situation was hopeless. I gave the order to scuttle ship. Captain Cromwell chose to go down with the boat because he knew too much. Ensign Max Fiedler also went down with the sculpin. For a change. It was a very pleasant phase to our activities. Patrols were tough on bodies and nerves, so we arranged a program of relaxation and rehabilitation between runs that was the envy of every branch of service. With the approval and backing of Fleet Admiral Nimitz, our Commander-in-Chief, we took over the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Honolulu, lock, stock, and barrel, and we said to the submarine men, it's all yours. Other operating forces also had quarters at the Royal, where it held about 150 officers and 1,000 men. But the majority were always submarine men and aviators from the carrier groups. I guess the Royal Hawaiian was one of the reasons there was a waiting list for sub duty. It almost seems like the more rest and fun our men had, the more damage they did to the Jap fleet. And that's understandable too, for they went to sea mentally and physically fit and trained to meet any type of combat. Just take the figures for 44. In 1944, 429 merchant ships, totaling 387,708 tons, were destroyed by your sub. In addition, about 500,000 tons of warships were sunk. And these figures for merchant ships include only ships of 1,000 tons or larger. The smaller ships sunk by your sub, chiefly by gunfire, were too numerous to count.
Yes, the Jap fleet was just about shot. In fact, by 1945, targets were getting awfully scarce and awfully small. What was left of Jap shipping tried desperately to crawl home, hugging the coast. But our subs went right at them, right into the dangerous shallow water right along the China coast and into the mine-filled Yellow Sea. We gave them no rest. This was about the time of the big carrier strikes and the B-29 raids in the homeland, which brings up another interesting phase of submarine work, lifeguard duty. That is, the picking up of our downed aviators. We had quite an air-sea rescue system worked out. It didn't get much publicity because we didn't want the Japs to know about it. I'm an electrician's mate second class, and of course, that means I don't get to see much topside action, so the other day I says to the chief, I says, um, hey chief, how about me getting on the gun field? He thought I was kind of crazy wanting to be topside with the others, but he finally gave in, and here I am. beginning to be more like it. That's one load of fish that won't end up in Jap bellies. <laughs> 